Hey guys, welcome back. Robocraft Early Access Coverage. This is episode 115. I'm Anigmius, and today we're putting the G10 Plasma Bomber through its paces again. I, I thought of giving it a name. Uh, there were some viewer suggestions for names, and I just realized I'm, I'm not really in a naming mood. <laughs> if, if we come back to this uh, and start using it on a regular basis, we'll give it a name. I'm actually really happy with the way it performs relative to our first outing. It's much more stable in the air. We don't have to invest nearly as much, uh, you know, mental effort and attention into keeping it flying in the direction we want. It still stalls like a bastard all the time. And I, I feel like where we're flying around now seems like sort of the top of the world because as soon as we try and go up, it's like we hit a wall and we just start falling down. I know it was a pretty aggressive pitch that, you know, we went on, but we went from a reasonable, reasonable forward speed to pitch up and almost immediately just bonk you're done ironically however there's a uh, enemy chopper that flies much higher and you'll see him in this match and i'm just so curious as to how he's doing it because the wings are supposed to be the ones that fly the highest and the chopper can fly at 90 percent of the maximum altitude of wings last i heard maybe there's been a recent change but that's the last i heard so when you see this chopper flying way up in the sky and i'll point him out to you when when uh, we first uh, see him I just, I don't get it. If, if I could get up to that altitude reliably, I would, but I can't. And I, I don't know if it's a game mechanic that limits what thrusters are doing beyond a certain altitude. I, I don't know. I just know whenever I tried to get anywhere close to the altitude of this chopper, I would stall. It was crazy. It was absolute travesty. Much beefier. Uh, take a lot of hits from railguns in this match. A lot of hits from railguns. There's a railgunner who sits on a ridge. Um, right around his base. There's actually two ridges. There's one that he can sit on that's actually inside his shield, and then there's another one that's just a little bit farther out that he sits on most of the time where he can basically pin me from across the map, almost. And it, it, it gets very obnoxious after a while. Every time you kind of peek out, and he, see, he gets a bead on you, and he starts plinking away, and then you try and do some evasive maneuvering, and you stall... Because apparently you hit the, the top of the world, possibly. I don't know. All I know is we were uh, not able to get any forward momentum. There was a great tip of you were left about how to um, correct stalls, which is to let off the forward throttle and just hold on the space bar, and the bot will kind of uh, drift backwards and kind of like a leaf falling or a feather as opposed to just falling and give you an opportunity to kind of reorient the bot and then from there pick up some speed going downward and recover that way. When I had the presence of mind to try it, it was actually very successful. It was a very good method. Uh, but a lot of times it's just you're in the middle of something and you're, there's so many different things going on. It's user error. I don't mind admitting it's user error. Um, poor piloting on my part, just learning how to get the most out of this bot. But right now what I'm finding, um, we, we take shots a lot better than we did. Uh, we're able to... Invest a lot more of our attention on actually finding and shooting at targets. There's that rail gunner again, just blam, 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 blam. You can see how many rail shots I took to the re to the ass end, and still I have most of the ass end, just sadly not enough to allow me to <laughs> stay airborne. And you can see now the the bomber squadron. This guy is this the one? I think it might be the one. This bomber, this rude, rude bomber who thought, "Hey, I'm gonna chase after the bomber that just crashed." You son of a bitch! You don't bomb your brothers. I clipped him hard, really hard, 380,000 damage worth of hard, uh, and then he kind of got finished off by a rail gunner, but payback is a bitch. The, that rail guy on the enemy team is going to get two deaths from me, and, and I'm very very pleased to provide those deaths, uh, but while I was shooting at that bomber up in the air, one of our friendly players came along and repaired my bot, Except I wasn't in a position to recover and actually get back airborne, so I had to respawn anyways. All in all, as flyers go, this is probably my most successful build. Uh, other people will show you designs that they've made that would uh, outperform mine in a variety of different categories. But for me, using the armor core method, making it beefy without being massive and heavy, uh, and being able to contribute to matches, this one's not bad. Not bad at all. That having been said... I, I I ran into a number of issues <laughs> in this match. Uh, first of all, the map size is grossly uh, inadequate for this kind of game mode. You can see there's that railgunner off in the distance, just banging away. 
he's basically just outside his base, and I'm basically just outside our base, and he's able to disable me from where he is, and he just sits there the whole match, and if he takes any damage whatsoever, he just scoots back into the base... And, I mean, it's a fantastic position for him. I'm not criticizing the player, but the the map design means that I've got very little room where I can work, where I'm not an immediate target. As soon as he gets uh, wind of the fact that I'm flying around anywhere that he can hit, which is the vast majority of the map, that's exactly what he does. And I can't always drop everything that I'm doing to make a beeline across the map to take out the rail gunner before I actually start in on the assaulting of other things, because that happens to be the side of the map where most of the enemy players are concentrated. And even though I will eventually get so frustrated with them, I will make a beeline across the map and I will destroy him. It's just not a it's not a viable strategy. You're you're basically robbing Peter to pay Paul in the vengeance department. And it, it's it gets old. It gets very tedious. The other thing that I'm having a lot of difficulty with is this whole idea with the levers. This was, I mentioned in a previous video, and some people got right pissed off at me, and that's okay. Um, because sometimes people have to get pissed off to um, be motivated to think about what they're doing. The conversation around the game and punishing levers, right? I said, we don't use the word punish for games like this. Punish is for um, children, slaves, and prisoners. Basically, people that you are entitled for whatever reason to dictate their behavior to them. Children, <laughs> slaves, and prisoners. People who have lost their right or n have not yet earned their right to make decisions for themselves. In the case of children, it would be too dangerous. In the case of prisoners, they lost their right. In the case of slaves, their right was taken away, and we, we don't like slavery. Uh, anything outside of that, their punishment doesn't fit. It's not the word that we use, but the cry for punishing levers uh, finally reached the devs. And they, they, they've got a lot of things that they're talking about. And I understand trying to promote uh, staying in a match as opposed to just simply leaving it, giving people the tools to get back into a match that they've been disconnected from. You know, there's a lot of work to be done on the playability side of things that could help address some of those issues. Here's that rail gunner sitting inside his shield on a ridge, banging away. Smart guy. He's going to get a lot of kills with my name beside them this match. There's only so much I can do. Well, we had this whole issue with the levers. And, I, I mean, I understand. We had someone leave from our team uh, as soon as it became obvious that things just weren't working on our side of the fence. I mean, you've seen how many times I get shot down by this damn rail gunner. And if it's not the rail gunner, it's the SMG guy. And if it's not the SMG guy, it'll be the cop, the copter way up in the sky, higher than I can reach. Sure, he, he leaves. And it, it's a bit of a disappointment. And now they've, they've changed it so that your respawn times are adjusted to reflect the fact that you lost a person, whether they disconnected or left or whatever, it doesn't matter. But when we get to the end of this match, and you'll see, I, I cut out the um, last three or four minutes of the match just because it was going on for so long. The enemy team basically captured or destroyed our plutonium reactor at the end of this match, but the game didn't register it as having been destroyed. There was no crystals left on the reactor anywhere that the enemy team could have shot off to do that one final step to trigger the win condition. And as a result of that, the match didn't look like it was ever going to end. It would probably time out before it ended with a win on either side, which is unfortunate for the red team because they earned the win. Um, and it's unfortunate for our team because we've been getting shellacked this whole match. And we who wants to sit and be farmed waiting for a match to time out for a kind of neutral, you didn't win but you didn't lose kind of reward? I don't. And as far as I know, with Free Jam and their tuning of rewards, it's probably still counted as a loss for both teams, meaning you don't get the win bonus. You get the, the bare basics as though your team had gone through and lost. It's, it's, it's not a very good situation. So when you realize, yep, it's glitched, it's bugged, it's not going to set the win condition, the match isn't going to end the way it's supposed to, it could go on for another almost 10 minutes now. What do we do? Well, I don't, I, I don't got time to sit around waiting for nothing to happen. I'm not interested in sitting around waiting to be farmed a little bit more. So the, as far as we're concerned, Red Team 1, match is over, I'm out of here. And I go to leave the match and a, a message pops up saying that I'll be penalized 
with my rewards for leaving. And I thought, really? The game is alpha. Look at this bastard way up there. Way the hell up there. That I don't know. I know I can get higher than I am now, but not as high as that guy. I just, like I say, every time I get even close, I stall. And I know this is too steep of an angle to try and get up that way, but later on you'll see I try and take a more um, gentle approach and still stall. There's, there's something going on and it's crazy. Anyways, leave a match because it's bugged and get told that our reward is going to be reduced. Um, because we might ruin the experience for other players. This is why you don't punish people. <laughs> this is The irony is that this is exactly the thing that I was talking about in the previous video about punishing people and how you try and have this system that punishes people for a certain kind of behavior. It's always going to nail people who didn't necessarily deserve to be punished, who are using the feature for legitimate reasons. And you say, oh, well, it's part of the process. Better that we punish the people who abuse it than, you know, leave the people who don't abuse it alone. I, I tell you what, the, the way this game is tuned with the rewards versus the grind to actually get anywhere, to be told that my reward would be reduced because I was leaving a match that was bugged, bullshit. And I don't give a rat's ass what crybaby excuse people to make everybody leaves and it's so hard, it's so hard to leave. You leave, and you go into another match, and then everyone's going to leave, and then you know what? You say, free jam, we don't even want to play your stupid game anymore, because no one ever wants to stay and finish the end of the matches. And free jam says, oh, there might be a problem with our game then if no one actually wants to stick around and play it till the end of a match. That's all it has to be. It doesn't have to be this convoluted series of, you know, first and second degree leaving uh, is three to five years plus uh, time off for good behavior crap. I'm not your prisoner. I'm not incarcerated in your legal system. I don't want to be told that my reward is going to be reduced because I'm leaving a match that should have ended three minutes ago when the other team destroyed our reactor, but it didn't. It's bugged. It's alpha, and we'd rather penalize you to keep the whiners happy than actually do something about the game and make it so that people want to stay. Because if everyone who said we want a penalty for this was met with a developer response that said we want to get the game up to a certain level to promote people staying and enjoying the game and having fun and wanting to be a part of it, then dealing with this epidemic of people leaving matches early with a punishment system, it's backwards. It's, it's like saying we're going to cook your meal. <laughs> And if you don't like it, that's too bad because we're going to charge you an extra 50% if you don't eat all of it. And, oh, by the way, the chicken's raw. <laughs> no. No. It's the. There's a lot of things going on. There are a lot of things that need to be corrected. The decision to transition from the 10-person versus 10-person deathmatch style to the MOBA style has a lot more that needs to be done than... I think it was readily apparent to anyone now that we've had an opportunity to kind of see how things play out. This is kind of where the enemy starts destroying our plutonium reactor. You can see that they're swarming around and our guys are doing their best to kind of deal with it. We've never really, our team has never really gelled and felt like we were doing anything productive. And now we're at the point where the, you know, there's always this point in the match where they smell blood in the water and we're kind of like, we, we want to discourage them from all massing around here, but eventually they're going to anyways. They're all kind of pushing up. Look at that rail gunner from that ridge all the way back there. The whole match. And this is, this is my moment. This is where like, you know what? I'm finally sick of you. You bastard. Your time has come. Taste sweet, sweet justice. That's two and three. See ya. <laughs> that, that was that was very rewarding. At this point, I didn't care what was going on the other side of the map. I was like, that guy has just all match, all match in this tiny little map going after me. I just wanted to show him that if I actually was able to focus on him as much as he focuses on me, this is what would have happened a lot more often. <laughs> Anyways, I got this mobile mode. Um, there's game mechanics. When, when I first started playing the mobile mode, 
that's what I was looking at. I was looking at the mechanics. I was looking at the towers and the reactors and the shields and the overclocking and the overclocking benefits and how that translated to bot performance and things like that. And then once you kind of set that aside, not necessarily resolve everything to your own satisfaction, but you set it aside and look at the other areas, the map size, the map layout, what's happening in the matches and how it kind of influences people's willingness to take part if you've got someone who is constantly leaving and requeuing and leaving and requeuing and leaving and requeuing, that's someone who's being an asshole. That's someone who's deciding that they don't like something. They're not happy that their team is dominant from the very beginning of the match, or they wanted a medic and they didn't have one, or blah, 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 and they've got this picky little list of asshole behaviors that they need to see in order to stick around in a match, and if they don't, they leave. That's the kind of person where you want to say, this is a habitual lever, and we want to maybe address this in a certain way by saying, we've noticed recently you've been leaving an awful lot of games. And consequently, now when you leave a game, you won't be able to requeue until that match is over. That to me would be a very reasonable approach to dealing with the situation of leavers because the people who abuse it are the ones, who are, they abuse it on an ongoing basis. It, they're not going to be the kind of guy who does it once a week or once a month or once every 30 matches or whatever. Those guys are the ones who are leaving because something came up. Something happened, something's going on, or something is just really, really awful in that match. There's a bug, whatever. You don't want to go after those guys. You want to go after the habitual leavers because they're the ones who are abusing the system. But we aren't set up to do that. Instead, it's just, it's, you're going to be penalized penalized for leaving you might ruin other people's experience nah I, I think that we're at the point now in the development where we're back to pre pre alpha the game mode is needs a lot of work the maps need a lot of work the rules need a lot of work the developers attitude towards their testers needs a lot of work and until then, I can't see myself supporting this game, really. I mean, I know people, if I try and take a break from the game and start producing other content, uh, you know, they just start, when's your next Robocraft video? When's your next Robocraft video? And it's very frustrating for me because I don't do videos for games that I don't play, and I don't want to play this game right now. I really don't. And I would rather just say, you know what? I'm going to keep an eye on patch notes. You know, every day, every other day, I'll check, see what's going on in the forums specifically not what people are complaining about, but what the devs are saying about this, that, and the other thing. And when it looks like it's a game that I might want to come back to, then we'll come back and we'll take a look. Major patches, major updates to the MOBA, major updates to gameplay, mechanics, and all these other things. Those are the kinds of things where I would come back and take a look and produce a video discussing what I saw and how I felt about it. But in terms of just playing this game, making bots, running matches day in, day out, no bloody way. There's just absolutely no way. I apologize if that disappoints some of you. Uh, some of you will want to move on and just clear your subscriber feed and go find someone else who's going to produce Robocraft videos for you. I've got other stuff in the pipe. I've got a couple new series that we just started, uh, and I've got another one that's going to be um, starting up fairly soon. It's a pre-pre-pre-alpha game. It's a vehicle builder. You can weaponize the vehicles. It's got limited multiplayer now. They're in the process of updating the UI and the updates. I, when I first picked up the game and started messing around with it, I was like, mm, it really needs like this, this, and this, this. This update is addressing pretty much all of those. And when that starts up, I'm going to be showing it to you guys. Hate to disappoint. Leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.